right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good whatever it is for you today. We're going to do something a little different today. Um, I am recording in Desmos. Uh, this is a free application. It's just a website, um, and you can sign into it if you can create an account with Google, and I think maybe Facebook. Um, this is one of my favorite applications. I use it a lot. Um, and I'm going to be showing you how to use this, um, how to use Desmos to create a particle motion simulator. And this is actually pretty simple. Um, I am going to have a link in the description to take you to Desmos so you can try it out for yourself. So the only really piece of prior knowledge that we're going to need to have is uh, this equation. Change in x is equal to initial velocity times t plus one half acceleration times time squared. Uh, this is, equation is true given that we have a constant acceleration and we're dealing with some sort of one-dimensional particle motion. So we're just going to keep that in mind because we're going to use that later. Um, got this error sign because Desmos doesn't understand the delta symbol, and we're going to come up with a way to counter that. So first we want to figure out how we're going to plot our point. I'm going to plot my point as x sub final, y sub final. So that's where the point location is going to show up and our ultimate goal is to define x sub final and y sub final. So x sub final should be the same thing as the initial x position uh, plus change in x. And again we can't do delta so I'm just going to do x sub t to denote change in x. And similarly for y, y sub final should be equivalent to y sub initial plus change in y. And I'm going to add sliders for a couple of these, uh, namely y initial. I'm going to let that be a picked value. And notice that it's picked this up as a function. So I'm just going to hide that uh, because that's not what we want to see. So I'm going to let the y initial be some value between 0 and 10. So we can pick what the initial y height of our particle is, but I'm just going to let the x initial just always be zero, just for simplicity. So we're always starting somewhere along the line, x equals zero. And again, it's picked this up as a function, but we can just hide that. So now our goal is simply to define the changes in x and the changes in y. And this is where this equation at the top comes in. So let's do x first, since that's what we have here. So I'm going to copy this equation, but I'm going to substitute an x sub d into here. So x sub d change in x is equal to our initial velocity x, so v sub i x times t. I'm going to make this a capital T, and you'll see why later. Uh, plus one half. Oh, that should be a plus. Plus one half um, a sub x. I'm going to make sure that the accelerations for x and y are distinct. Uh, times t squared. And I'm going to copy this equation, put this down here, and then I'm going to change all the x's to y's, so we have an equation for y. So the change in y is equivalent to the initial y velocity times time plus one half acceleration y times t squared. And again, I should make this a capital T. This should be a capital T. So I'm going to add sliders. So a couple other things. I'm going to add a slider for t for time. So our time is going to be somewhere between 0 and 10 seconds. And we'll be able to change that. So we can see where the particle is going to be at any given instant uh, between 0 seconds and 10 seconds. And now it wants an acceleration sub x. I'm also going to let that be some, some value. This is going to be a value between negative 10 and 10. And this is recognized as a function. I'm going to hide it. And again, this wants acceleration sub y, I'm going to let that be a slider. Uh, some other things I want is initial velocity of x and initial velocity of y. Now all of these are sliders. So let's organize this up a little bit. I'm going to delete this equation now that we've used it. I'm going to put this at the top because this is what's going to show us where our, um, where our point is. Then all of these equations here, these are just operating equations. So I'm just going to create a folder and I'm going to title it equations. Equations, I cannot spell. 
equations. And we're just going to drop all of these into here. And then we're going to close that folder. So that's a little cleaner. And we can just drag that to the bottom. And now I'm going to put time at the top. And then I'm going to have um, velocity initial x, acceleration x, um, initial y position, initial y velocity, initial y acceleration. So all of these are now sliders. So I'm going to let this just be 0. I'm going to say that the initial y velocity is 0. The initial x velocity, I'm just going to set that to 0. I'm picking easy things. I mean, now we have an acceleration of 1 on x and 1 on y. Okay. So our... Ah, this got set to negative 10. Let me set that to... Let me set the initial velocities to 0. Okay, zero and zero. Okay, so now we have a point. You'll notice that we can change time and we'll watch the particle move according to the specifications that we have given. Uh, but I'd like to be able to see what is the trajectory really going to look like. So the final step is I'm going to create a parametric form and we're going to express x sub final and y sub final in terms of another variable, uh, little t, lowercase t, right? So we said that x sub final is simply equal to change in x, right? So that's this equation. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it in here, the first component. I'm going to drop out the equals and substitute this with a little t. And now for y, it was equal to that plus the initial y. So we're going to have y sub initial uh, plus all that. And again, we're going to drop that out and substitute this with a little t. And I want to make sure the bounds between this are for the time is 0 and 10. And now I'm going to change this to a dashed line. So it's easier to look at. And finally, I think I'm going to change the colors a little bit. I want this to be a blue, and I want this to be a red. I think that looks nice. And there we have it. I'm going to take these and put them down in my equations folder so we don't have to look at those. And really, the only thing we have left are the sliders that we can manipulate and hide that. There we go. So there it is the particle motion simulator. And let's, let's take a look at how it works. So let's have the x acceleration uh, be zero. We're not going to accelerate at all in the x direction. The initial x velocity, let's just that, let that be one, uh, one point two, sure. And the initial, and the y acceleration, let's put that at one point eight. See, now we're getting this nice sort of parabolic shape, as should be expected. Um, you could figure out parametrically that that's what this would represent as a function. Um, so yeah, make this for yourself, play around with it. Um, if you have any questions or comments, I'll be happy to answer those. Or if there's anything else you want to see me do, I've got a couple other things I think I want to show off in Desmos. I'll probably do more videos um, with Desmos. I really do enjoy it. Um, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.